Hey guys, welcome back to another video. You may remember in a previous video, we harvested oats from our own backyard. Today, we're gonna to be threshing those oats. Threshing really means separating the grain from the actual grain stalks themselves. We're gonna be beating up some oats. That's coming up next. So in order to process oats a little further, in order to get them ready for your table, they need to be threshed. Threshing is really just the action of separating that grain from the grain head itself. Luckily, this is a hullless variety, so once you thresh it, there are no hulls, there's no further processing other than, you know, if you want to actually turn it into rolled oats or flaked oats or kind of whatever you want to do with it. In order for oats to thresh properly, they need to be super dry. They've been sitting inside here for at least a week and a half, maybe a little longer, mainly because it's been raining outside. And every day I come out and I actually test them. I pop one of the kernels and I see how hard it is. And if it's hard enough that it doesn't actually, you know, form a dent in your fingernail, then it's really good to go at that point. So the action of threshing actually separates that grain from the grain head. And basically what happens is the grain literally pops out of its sheath. And there's a little piece of grain right there. And I'm going to zoom this in so you guys can see it. That's the piece there that we want to eat. And it's basically a seed. You can collect these again and use them next year. In threshing, basically it's a matter of whipping the grain heads against something hard. Now I found that the sheaves that we made are a little bit too big. A grouping of about a third of that size actually works quite well. We cut our grain a little bit long, as you can see, but it actually makes for a great handle. So this is one reason to cut your grains really long because the action of threshing is pretty violent and to have something that, that's really substantial in your hand that allows you to, to, to thresh with that that action actually works really really well so originally I actually tested the threshing action into just a garbage can and I found that we end up losing a lot of oat grain on the floor which I don't really feel like sweeping it up and using it uh, because this floor hasn't been really cleaned in a while and this is a food product so I found that adding this sleeve uh, this basically just made a cardboard all the way around with a cutout in it that allows you to thresh down into it actually saves a lot of that. You don't end up losing very much grain at all. So before I'm about to thresh, I basically push the stalks down or out so that they're all kind of in one area that encompasses about kind of eight to nine inches long. And I find that that actually works really, really well for threshing. And you don't want it too long because it'll actually hit off the back of the sleeve and you don't want it too short because you won't get enough thrust. So this length actually works really well. Now you'll know once the grain heads are out because you won't hear any pinging inside of the, the garbage can anymore. Actually after you thresh, if you feel the grain heads, you'll see that they're empty. Now sometimes some of the grain that's actually at the center of the sheaf that you're trying to thresh may actually still be there because they haven't made good contact or just haven't dislodged. So after I get my initial thresh done, I reorganize the sheath and, you know, just by moving it around and then I thresh it once again. And I find that I'm able to get about 95% of the grain out of, you know, this grouping of oats. All right, so let's start that threshing process. It's really this, this action and you're banging, you're banging this, you're aiming to have this straight down into the can. And, and at the point where you come down is where you hit the can. All right, so let's start threshing.
right, so I've got quite a few sheaves done here now. And I've reached down in the bottom of the bucket, just so you can see what you get. And that's what you get there. Basically, it's there's oats in here. There's pieces of chaff, which is basically some of the casings. And unfortunately, I had hay in my mix, so there's hay seed. But when it comes to winnowing or blowing that out, we'll be able to get that basically to a product that's just oats as the seed for those things are actually pretty light. So uh, we've come up with a process there that I think is gonna work really well. So the first pass through, this actually worked quite well. I've cleaned up the mist. We can pull this off now and have a look at our harvest. And here we go. There's our first pass of our oat grain. And looks like we got about maybe two and a half to three gallons out of it. I'm not sure what the weight is, but it's probably maybe that was maybe 15 or 16 pounds of grain there, I guess. So I'm going to pass it through this again in order to filter out some more of the grass seed and stuff. And I'd say that that's probably going to be enough. And then on to the next step. Pretty cool grain from our own backyard. <laughs> 